What's up, my name is Tech Number here for Troubleshoot and welcome back to another video. In this quick video, I'll be going through an optimization guide for Uncharted Legacy of Thieves collection, which has just come out to Steam yesterday. It's a relatively demanding title, especially for not so brand new hardware. This is definitely something you may want to mess around with the settings in to get the most out of your PC before you begin. Number one, of course, make sure you have as many things closed in the background as possible, as few overlays running, etc. All of the basic optimization tips that you can possibly think of, as this video is specifically going to focus on Uncharted Legacy of Thieves collection itself. If you'd like a Windows optimization guide for Windows 10, Windows 11, or even NVIDIA, in the description down below you'll find optimization guides to get even more performance out of your PC. Let's get through to optimizing the brand new Uncharted game on PC. Steam. I'll start off by firing up the actual game itself through Steam, but I'm pretty sure you can get it on the Epic Games Store as well. On the main menu over here, simply select Uncharted 4 or Uncharted Lost Legacy. I'll choose Uncharted 4, and this unlocks a new options menu that you can find on the left here. You should immediately be able to see some different graphics changes on the main menu here, though you'll see most of your performance gains in the actual game itself. Of course, in the bottom right, you'll also see building shaders. You should wait for this to reach 100% before firing up the game itself for a free FPS boost. Just wait for it to run through to completion. This will run as we're customizing the options here, so we can start with that. Options, then display, and inside of here, we'll start by choosing display mode full screen for better FPS in most cases. On Windows 11, this doesn't seem to make too much of a difference, especially on the newer versions. Display monitor will of course be whatever monitor you're currently using and the display resolution should match the rendered resolution and it should be the best resolution available for your monitor or at least a supported one. You don't want to push it any higher otherwise you're literally wasting processing power generating pixels you're not even going to see. So these should both be the same and they should match your screen as it says on the box. In my case it's 2K 2560 by 1440. You can only customize these when you have the full screen option selected up here under display mode. Then aspect ratio is your preference. Scrolling down through resolution scaling, this game supports AMD FSR and DLSS, which is great. These two options, if you have them available, will gain you a ton of FPS. DLSS is locked to NVIDIA graphics cards only. However, you can use AMD FSR pretty much anywhere. Both of these have similar graphic impact and FPS impact. Obviously, the further to the right you push this, the more fast it'll get going from quality to ultra performance, though it renders the game at a smaller resolution and blows it up big using AI. A very similar thing is done for AMD FSR up here. Starting from quality going to ultra performance, you'll notice more visual artifacts the further to the right you push it. However, you'll get more and more FPS the further you do push it. Right below it, we have a sharpness option, which sort of gets rid of some of that blurring effect you can get, especially when you're pushing DLSS to higher options. I would leave both of these off and optimize the rest of your settings first, then you can come back to these and turn them on to either quality or balanced, depending on what you like. If you don't know what to set them to, set them to quality. It'll give you a really good FPS improvement for pretty much no visual impact at all. We do also have render scale down here if you have both of these off. If you can turn these on, I would recommend choosing at least one of these, but you can change the render scale over here to change what the game is rendered at, and it won't have any special AI magic applied to it, it'll just render in a smaller window and blow it up bigger. So you probably want to go with FSR or DLSS if you have an NVIDIA graphics card. Scrolling down to the bottom, display settings. You should turn VSync off unless you're getting screen tearing where the top half doesn't match the bottom half of your display. There's a lock frames to 30 option here, which should be off by default. Leave this off as you want higher FPS. Performance counters, you can turn this on while you're testing things out just to see exactly what kind of impact your options are having. Brightness is user preference and motion blur intensity is also user preference. If you're someone who suffers from motion sickness, this is definitely something you'll want to lower all the way down to zero for a much more pleasant experience. I prefer at least a little bit, so I'll leave it on one or even two. F to apply changes and I'll head back using escape. You can already see an FPS counter in the top left, sitting at around 80, 90 FPS. I'll head into advanced graphics here, and here's where we can get some extra performance out of our PC. There's not a huge amount of granular control here, but it starts off with the preset quality up here. We can go from ultra down through to low, 
and applying changes, you should see a pretty drastic FPS change, as well as some actual visual change in the background as we apply some changes here. Going from 80-ish FPS to a solid 120-ish FPS is a huge improvement, and you'd usually start by cranking down the preset to the lowest option available here, low, to lower the rest of the settings to the bare minimum. Now we'll start by surprise, cranking things back up. You'll see a video RAM counter at the very bottom that displays what kind of usage you'll have on your graphics card. The higher you push things like textures, the more VRAM will be eaten up, but things will look way better in game with pretty much no FPS impact. Sitting at around 120-ish FPS and applying changes, you can see my FPS pretty much doesn't change at all. There's very little impact here, but you'll see a huge difference in the in-game quality of things that you're looking at, especially when you're up close. The highest you need to push this is high. You don't really gain anything for pushing this to ultra, besides maybe a better looking game on, say, a 4K monitor. Model quality, you can crank this up to enhanced for pretty much no performance impact at all, but it does make people look far more realistic in game. Anisotropic filtering has pretty much no effect on FPS, and you can push this pretty much as high as you want. While it does say it'll impact GPU performance, on modern GPUs this has pretty much no effect. Then shadows, you can have this on low, but shadows will appear rather blocky. If you push this up too high, you'll notice that blockiness vanishes and things look a lot better. But if you push this all the way up to ultra, you'll see an FPS drop for pretty much no real gain other than having much sharper shadows. Between low and medium, there's almost no difference. If you're someone who will play it on low, leave it on low. Otherwise, push it up to high and leave it there. Unless you're really going to focus on, say, taking screenshots and things like that. In which case, you can push this up to ultra but high is more than good enough. The reflections option here will have very little impact on FPS and it'll be very situational when you do lose FPS, if at all. If you often find blocky reflections distracting and water and things like that, push it up too high and forget about it. Otherwise, you can leave it on low if you're really clawing for all the extra performance you can get. I'll leave this at high and pretty much forget about it. Then ambient occlusion. If you have this set too low, you'll notice very odd lighting around the world, Grass and things like that have no shadows, and it looks very off-putting. However, if we crank this up even one notch to medium, you'll see a very small FPS impact. However, it has a huge difference on the in-game quality. Things look so much more lifelike, and I definitely recommend having this on, at least on medium, if not any higher. Of course, that being said, if you're running a super low-end PC, you may have to crank down pretty much all of these options. If you're going to turn anything up, let it be textures if you have available VRAM. Otherwise, set ambient occlusion to medium for a huge impact on visual quality, just as it adds shadows on a ton of different places. And things look a lot better because of it. That being said, if I apply my settings and head back... The rest of these options here are pretty much user preference, and in the bottom right, you'll see my shaders are still building. If they seem to freeze like this, simply wait a minute or two and see if it goes up at all. If it doesn't, it may be completely frozen, and a restart of the game will get things rolling once more. I would definitely recommend waiting for it to complete before firing into the actual game itself, but if you're impatient, you can of course fire it up and start the story as you would have hoped. Anyways, that's really about it for this quick video. Thank you all for watching. My name's been Techno here for Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.